Welcome everybody to the Shoe Enthusiast channel. I'm really excited today to share this information with you. I want to show you how to build a shoe collection on a shoestring budget. A way to get shoes that you can be happy to wear when you don't really have thousands of dollars in disposable income. You don't need that. There are a lot of ways you can get high quality, beautiful shoes without having a very big budget. I'm going to show you ways I've done it. There are probably a bunch of other ways out there to do it, but I'm going to show you what's worked for me and what can work for you. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you five ways that I use in order to acquire a shoe collection without breaking the bank, okay? But before I do that, there's something I, I do think is important all of you should know. And it sounds very fundamental, but it's worth saying, and that's this. You have to have a budget. Like, actually have a budget. In fact, what I do is I keep money stored uh, into a PayPal account, and then I know at any given time how much I have to buy shoes with. That's the first thing you have to do is say, okay, this is my budget, and this is what I need to spend. So keep that in mind as we go forward, number one. The first thing is kind of a mental thing. Whenever you're looking at shoes, very rare is there a pair of shoes that you need to have tomorrow. I mean, unless it's like a job interview and you're scraping to get one, and that might be the case. But in most cases, the first thing you want to think about when you're building a shoe collection on a shoestring is this. You don't need the shoes. One way you will overspend is by thinking that you need these shoes, and you need them now. Whenever you're in that kind of mindset, you say, I need something and I need it now, you're likely to spend too much money. You're, you're likely to go over your budget. You're likely to justify going over that budget. But don't do that. You may need a certain kind of shoe. Maybe you need a formal shoe, but you may not need the $500 pairs of shoes you're looking when you only have 150 in your budget. So, the best way to keep yourself disciplined is to remember my rule number one, which is, you don't need the shoes. You might want them, but you don't need them. Number two, always buy on sale. I know that sounds simple, but I'll tell you this. I have only ever one time purchased a pair of shoes that were not on sale. And those were my wedding shoes. But to be fair, they came with a matching belt. So it was kind of part of a promotion but I paid what would be considered full price for those shoes, and that's it. So the thing is, how do you find shoes on sale? I have many, many sources I use for that. One of the top sites I use for that is dapper.com, always showing when things are on sale, including shoes and general menswear. That's the first place I go. There's some apps I use, called one's called List, L-Y-S-T. I've used that. And there's some Reddit pages. You can find many sources to see when things are on sale. But again, if you keep to rule number one, which is you don't need the shoes, you can wait for the shoes to go on sale. And then many times I have found shoes I really wanted at 50% off. So when you're looking for the shoes and you don't have a big budget, always look for the sales. Number three, eBay. Now there are other sites other than eBay and I'm using eBay as kind of shorthand for buying pre-owned shoes on the internet. There are sites like Grailed, Poshmark, even Reddit that you can use to buy shoes. I like eBay because it has the biggest selection of shoes. 
So there's some of you out there, you're thinking right now, I don't want to buy another person's shoes. And that's fair. You know, if a person wears a pair of shoes long enough, it's going to mold to their foot. So you're not going to get the greatest comfort from that particular shoe. But here are things I look for when I'm on eBay. And I spend a lot of time on eBay and I've got some great deals off eBay. So the first thing I look for are new old stock shoes. You can find shoes that are vintage shoes that are actually good shoes. In fact, a lot of the shoes, if you can get any from the 60s, frankly, they might be better made than shoes you can get today. I got a pair of old uh, Cole Haan shoes from the 60s that are a cut above anything Cole Haan makes today. I even did a review on video on it. So, that's one thing I look for. New old stock or new in box. These are brand new shoes. It's at a discounted price, generally speaking. But here's the beauty of a pre-owned shoe. If you can get a shoe that has been worn, say, less than five times, it's kind of like a car that gets driven off a lot. It devalues the minute it goes off a lot, but it's still a really good car. It's the same with shoes. If you find a shoe that has been worn less than five times, it's, it hasn't molded to the owner's foot yet, you're practically getting a new shoe and you can get it at a great discount. I have probably about six pairs of shoes that I've gotten at under $100 that retail up to $500. And frankly, they're brand new. So look here, you can see, this is what a shoe looks like when it hasn't been worn very much. You can see that there are areas in the sole that look practically brand new and you can see some are worn. That's the telltale sign that something hasn't been worn very much. Take a look at this one. This is a shoe I've worn for five plus years. You can clearly see it's been worn quite a lot. So when you are looking for pre-owned shoes, you look for the ones that hadn't been worn very much. And you can always tell by the sole. If a seller on eBay does not want to put a picture of a sole on there, you probably can guess it's old and worn out. You probably shouldn't buy it. Number four. Don't be afraid to trade. As you start building communities, you may be on forums somewhere, you start to see people who wear similar sizes as you. Me personally, I'll be honest with you, I have probably bought three to four pairs of shoes that just didn't fit. And the thing is, I'm not alone in that. There's a lot of people for in between sizes who for some reason or another got a pair of shoes thought they would fit and they didn't. When you start to make friends with those people you will see that they too have shoes that don't fit and are sitting in a closet. Sometimes you sell them and I've done this I've sold them and I've gotten some of my money back. A better deal might be to trade with somebody who wears around the same size as you do. They may have a pair of shoes you want. You have a pair of shoes they may want. Trade. It is a good idea because you may actually have a pair of shoes you don't wear anymore. Somebody else has a pair of shoes they don't wear anymore. And you trade so that both of you have a pair of shoes you want to wear. I've done it too, by the way, where it has not worked out for me. The shoes I got, I thought would fit, it didn't fit. But I've been able to sell them, and there's no hard feelings. Because it's always on good faith. And 
I will say I've had good experiences so far. That doesn't mean I wouldn't have a bad experience where I would send something to somebody and I wouldn't get the shoes. But so far that hasn't happened to me. So when you're looking to build a collection, you're looking to build a collection of different kinds of shoes, look for other people and don't be afraid to trade. You never know what you might be able to get. Number five. Thrift stores. I saved this to the last because I believe that this is the highest risk, highest reward proposition you can do. You go to a thrift store, you can probably get a pair of shoes, 10 to $20. Right? Go to a thrift store, 10 to $20. But there are a lot of people out there who rightfully will say that you will never find anything of value at a thrift store. And I'll be honest with you, it's kind of true. I have had different kinds of luck at thrift stores. Sometimes I find a shoe I like, but eight out of 10 times I don't. So that's why I say it's high risk, high reward. When you find that shoe for $10 that you really wanted, it is a steal. Right? You get a shoe, $10. And when you look at my shoe collection, I have six pairs of shoes that I have gotten off thrift stores. But the reason for that is there's a secondary reason that I like thrift stores, is that it allows me to find shoes that have let me practice my skills at restoring shoes. This is a hobby of mine which is why this may not be for you. I like to restore shoes. I like to find shoes that people got rid of and restore them so that they're back in usable shape. And a couple of things I've been able to do with this. Number one is wear them. These are a pair of shoes right here that I restored and I still wear them. I love these shoes, they're great shoes. They were great shoes. Somebody just didn't know how to take care of them. Secondary, I've been able to take shoes that I know that people like, that are gonna be classic shoes. I've been able to sell them on eBay or other platforms. And I use that money to buy myself new shoes. So those are some things you can do with thrift store shoes. Again, it may not be for you, but I find it's the highest risk, highest reward. If you are really on a tight budget and you want shoes in your collection, maybe a thrift store near you will have them. Or maybe they'll have shoes that other people didn't want that you can restore, that you can sell, that will allow you to buy the shoes you actually want. So, let's sum up how to build a shoe collection on a shoe tree. If you're just now seeing this because you fast forwarded through all of my excellent explanations, which I know some people do, and you're now at the end because you're like, I didn't want to hear anything that guy said before and I'm waiting to the end. Okay, you've been rewarded because I'm going to tell you what I said the entire time before. So how to build a shoe collection on a shoestring. Before you start, again, have a budget in mind, a tight budget. Know how much money you have to spend before you even start this process. Number one, keep the mindset. You don't need the shoes. Number two, always buy shoes on sale. Number three, eBay. Number four, don't be afraid to trade. The fifth and last is thrifting. I have used these methods to build a collection of shoes and thing is you don't need a lot of money to do it. As an aside, ask for shoes for Christmas, ask for your birthday, ask people to give you shoes.